Hello uh, there. Hi. You? Sorry, you cut out. I can hear what you said. I'm assuming you said, how are you doing? Yeah. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm good. I'm a little tired. I just took an accounting exam, so. Oh, yeah? It was a little stressful day, yeah. Let it go. It went pretty well. Yeah, now I'm, I'm done with the class, so it feels good. Yeah, that's always a good feeling. Can you tell us a bit about yourself, like where you're from, how you got into music? I'm from Chicago. My name is Christian, by the way. So I grew up in Germany, and like that's where like house, like techno was really big. I was really young, so obviously I wasn't involved directly, but just always been surrounded by like electronic music and stuff like that. Um, and then I know back in middle school, my dad showed me Dead Mouse, who is kind of everyone's like first kind of electronic experience and um he basically said I could make that kind of stuff you know a laptop at home you know back in middle school so I was like okay like might as well try and then uh it got really addicting I kind of enjoyed like making music kind of like Legos I was really big into into Legos when I was younger yeah um so I kind of it kind of filled it like filled that void for me you know the older I got which was kind of nice um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a full-time student as well, so I do music kind of in between my studies. Um, yeah, <laughs> and I go to school in Mizzou. Well, that's really cool that it, like, stayed with you and definitely, like, influenced your music. So then, um, growing up, listening to, like, Dead Mouse and stuff like that, how did that lead you to producing more <laughs> Yeah, um, so I came in, yeah, I came in wanting to make, like, festival music, like, Dead Mouse, you know, Cascade, just like hype stuff. And then there was one summer, I think the summer of 2016, where, you know how Spotify has like Discover Weekly, just like a hodgepodge of stuff you might like. Yeah. Um, I found like Chill Hop Records. They had a couple of tracks from their 2016 like spring compilation in that playlist. And it was really neat because I'd never heard of like lo-fi, chill hop, you know, that whole thing until then I was strictly into like house EDM type stuff and I really enjoyed it because you know a lot of the music I listened to prior was vocal list so it was a lot of just production based but it was the same kind of you know concept except a different vibe it was like beats but chill it, it was it was interesting and I really liked it um so then freshman year for me so uh, almost three years ago um in my dorm room, I decided, let me try to make some chill beats for once, like see see what goes into it, I guess. And then it kind of just like spiraled out of control. I don't know. I, it just like worked out really nicely. Um, I have like simplistic taste and the genre is like naturally a simplistic genre. So it kind of played well into, you know, my tendencies. Um, yeah, <laughs> kind of just happened, honestly. That's cool. So then how do you balance a music career while being a student? That's definitely something I've seen people struggle with. It's hard. Well, I guess I just like crave the times I can work, but it always feels the best when it's like more like a reward versus me taking away time from stuff I know I have to get done. Mm -hmm. um, so in a way, it's kind of like being in school has kind of helped my sessions a little more because I'll make sure to get all my immediate stuff done. That's, you know, affecting my life directly that's not music related and then I have free time and then the free time I can you know use towards something that I enjoy and is also like you know a fun little project for me on the side um yeah I mean the, like the motivation part's kind of difficult at times you know like I'd rather be making music than doing you know whatever um but it's kind of just like treating it more of like a reward type thing and then peppering it in so that you work really efficiently when you need to and then when you got to do other stuff, you just put it on pause, I guess. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's been difficult. <laughs> yeah. Would yeah. you say that you work better in, like, an environment where there's, like, definitely a goal at hand slash deadline versus a more laid back, like, oh, we'll let the idea come to us kind of thing? Like in music? Like yeah. Like music-related? Um, that's a hard question because it really depends like on my mindset at the time I guess yeah but I, I I think for me I like I like having things kind of organized prior to kind of execute on like having a deadline and you know at least an idea a concept like for my albums I always get the artwork done first like just mm -hmm. to get the vibe set you know a visual you know guideline um I don't really work much in like production sessions with other people because you know I like the genre I'm in hasn't really required 
that yet, at least. Mm -hmm. um, but I think having deadlines in some ways can help. Like pressure ain't always bad. You know, it just depends how you perceive it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. It really, it's really, it's really circumstantial, but I think maybe on some, under some pressure, I could probably do a little better. Cause if, it, if it's too laid back, then I'll just like kind of chill a little too much. So, so there's a lot of lo-fi producers out there. How did you yeah, get yourself into the mainstream of it? Cause you've been around for a while. I've, I've been around since 2018. So yeah. it's not, not like super long, but. No, but it's definitely, it's like, a, I definitely remember my friend sending me a chilled cow playlist and, like, seeing your name and music coming up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, because chilled cow was definitely, like, my first exposure to lo-fi because one of my friends was like, this is what I play video games to because <laughs> I need the mental peace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, like, getting out of the mainstream, just, like, getting noticed type thing. Like that yeah, kind of, or? you definitely have a lot of success on streaming platforms, and so yeah. I'm wondering, like, how did you make yourself stand out in such a? Yeah, I gotcha. Instrumental genre. Um, I would I would say, well, I've kind of approached like the name, like the whole project, like the artist alias, is like a project. You know, I run it kind of like a project. You know, you maintain it, you groom it, you make sure it looks nice and pretty. Um. But for me, it was like when I first got into lo-fi, like my first thing I noticed is that a lot of lo-fi artists release a ton of music where it's like honestly like so much where like individual releases lose value. You know what I mean? Like if there's so much to choose from, it makes what's there feel less, you have less value versus like a few things that are high quality. I, I don't know. But I, I tried to keep my library kind of small off the bat just put a lot, I at least put a lot of time into what I would release. Um, but then again, it's a big thing with music and like the, the like success I've found has kind of been like lucky, like really lucky. Um, Cause like in like the freshman year, I made a five track EP on SoundCloud and then college music picked that up completely by chance, just from surfing SoundCloud. And then Chill Cow picked up a track for my second project with them, and then I got in contact with him. It was just like dominoes. So honestly, a lot of it was most majority of it was probably just right place, right time, right ears, you know. Um, but like sound wise, just I just like for a while, you know, there's kind of that period where you're comparing yourself to the people you look up to, or you know, the people that are like more so established. And then it got to a point where I just made stuff I was happy with. Um, and I knew that, you know, if if people enjoyed my music, they enjoyed, you know, just enjoyed it to listen to like my stuff in like in particular, they wouldn't really question it. You know, all the creative questions that artists have, like they think too deep. And I I used to do that so much. And eventually I just like let myself go and just like make stuff I like. And if I like it, I've come to notice that the people that like my music tend to not mind it either. Um, but it's it's such a hard question to answer because I'm pretty sure like if those very hyper specific things didn't happen at that very point in time, I would not be in this position now. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it plays into it for sure. But I, I guess just having like some originality definitely didn't hurt. And then it played into the situations that when it was necessary most, I would say. Yeah. What would you recommend to artists to be able to like walk out what everybody does? You know what I mean? Like the exterior thoughts. It, it can be hard. It can be really, really hard. Um, I don't know. It's kind of, it's in a sense, like, I've noticed the more I've worked, the more I've I've kind of created my own, like, fine-tuned, like, workflow, like, things I do, specifically to me, you know? Um, I, like, never watch YouTube tutorials, and I, like, very infrequently, unless it's, like, a very specific question I have, um, I know a fair amount of producers that kind of limit themselves mentally because they watch so many videos regarding hyper specific things. And a lot of times they take it as like the law of the land set in stone. This is the way type, that type thing where music is, you know, I've had so many people ask like, what do you do to kind of like get through to like your true sound, like what you want to make. It's just like, make what you like, you know, if you like it, that's all that matters. Um, it's like, it's, it's everything you've made is original to you you know, it's unique. So embrace that aspect and make it as unique as possible. Because 
like the more you compare yourself to other people in the genre, like it's not a bad thing, like seeking inspiration, but it also can be really hindering because you're, you don't do things sometimes that you don't think other people would do because it's not in the norm, you know? So it's just like breaking free of those shackles, which can be hard. And it, it makes you feel very vulnerable because you're having complete trust in yourself creatively, I guess, or like semi-complete. Um, but it's the reward and like, you know, risk for like risk versus reward. Like when you see the, the come, like the, like the comebacks from, you know, going a little extra than you usually would, it kind of just exponentially builds. It's like, layers on the cake you know you do one thing and it kind of builds and then you just you see the big picture and you're like okay <laughs> yeah no i love that answer i i really love that answer um so then which daw do you produce in and why i work in ableton okay. um i tried fl studio before i just didn't like the, the very blocky feel to me i like ableton's really like liquidy like you know you can zoom in infinitely like just different feel everyone had it's their, just my personal preference there's no nothing wrong with fl studio there's crazy producers on fl studio too um but also i was trained like in my early start at enableton with like an actual like certified trainer that's from their company so they have like people throughout the like the country i think it's global i'm not really sure but in chicago there was a guy who taught me for a handful of time we still we still talk to this day um and it kind of just happened to be that way because we knew a guy that trained in that program and I was looking for a new doll. I was like, you know, it sounds like a good idea. Um, but I've come to love it. It was really overwhelming at the start, like any software. But, you know, once you kind of find out what works, like what you do, it's like writing. It's, it's like nothing. So then what brought you from Chicago to Missouri? to school or anything specific with music? Um, originally, I was looking at California, but then it just, way too expensive, a little too far away. Um, my dad's from St. Louis, actually. So, yeah, so since he's from St. Louis, I've, we've been in that area a freak amount of times, like visiting grandparents and family. Um, and, you know, Mizzou's campus is nice. It's like a weird, moderate Midwest. Like, it's a little bit warmer than Chicago, which is nice. But it's also, you know, familiar to Chicago in a, in a lot of ways. Um, you know, school is good. People are nice. Family's close, like two hours away in St. Louis, six hours from home. So it's a nice in between. Um, yeah, it was actually the bottom of my list. And then it kind of just like clicked its way up and it just made more sense. And it's, it was a good decision. Well, DJing, if so, what would you, how would you describe one of your live sets? <laughs> well, see, like when I DJ, I DJ like, I'm in a fraternity. So I DJ all my frat parties and stuff. Um, I'm trying to get out more to like live events. I haven't really done like anything like public. I don't think yet. It's just been like friends and family type stuff, you know, school events, stuff like that. Um, but when I do sets, it's fun. I usually play like the stuff. So I'm big into like dubstep, like trap, like all that crazy bass sound design stuff. Like, cause producer, you know, producers like the weird technicality music sometimes. So I'm big into that kind of stuff. So at, at like events, you know, obviously you got to cater to the audience. So like a lot of times you got to play some me pretty mediocre rap, but you know, sometimes there's some heat in there. Like you can, you can kind of play around. Um, but you know, like this is flowing and people stop caring. You can play, I'll throw in some crazy bass music in between like some rap songs just to keep the energy. Um, you know, sometimes I'll put on some like OG dead mouse cause he actually makes like DJ friendly albums. Like just like beats that are pretty malleable you can do a lot with and then i'll just mix like acapellas basically over them that people know and just like remix live it's kind of fun if you could perform at one festival as like your dream performance which one would it be and why shoot um probably well knowing like the og festival for me when i was younger was like ultra music festival could given the fact that i was like in that music at the time probably ultra or being from Chicago, like Lollapalooza would be crazy. That'd probably be bonkers. Yeah, just being at home, I think Lollapalooza honestly would be the best. Just because, like, it's like the Chicago people, you know? Um, kind of like full circle type thing. It'd be kind of crazy. Yeah, I haven't been to Lollapalooza yet, but it's on my list of, like, have to go to, you know? it. I haven't either. I'll be honest, oh, I have what? not gone. <laughs> I have, I'll, be, I'll be honest, I've been to zero music festivals. Wow, what what's yeah. 
helped you? I just like for it's just like I don't understand. Like it's super cool like going to live events, but I just like don't have really much appeal to go. I don't know why. Like they look crazy to play, but going looks like sometimes kind of a hassle. <laughs> like it's definitely fun. It's definitely fun. But I've had no one to go with. That's primarily why. Like, you know, I have a couple of friends that go, but they'll go with, you know, their go like their girlfriends and stuff. And like I'm not trying to throw a wheel at a festival, you know, like I'd basically be alone. Um, but I know that once I'm out of school and I have like complete freedom, um, I definitely want to check out some shows and see what they're like. Yeah. Well, if anything ever catches your eye, the Glass team is usually out and about in the festival stuff. So if you're looking for friends, definitely let us know because awesome. I love the whole team. We I would like to think we have a pretty cool group that like knows how to handle the scene. So if that's the issue, just let us know. <laughs> like we have cool people. No, yeah. If you could give yourself one piece of advice when you were starting to make music, what would it be and why? Yeah, like I said earlier, just like embrace your own like your unique like unique creative process. Like, you know, take inspiration, but don't hold yourself back. Given like the popular, you know, like the popular get big because they take initiative on their ideas. So it was for me, it was definitely that. You know, not getting stuck in that loop. Do you have anything fans should keep an eye out for? Yeah. So the final like installment of bedtime stories will be in May. So part four. Um, probably the most stacked one. There's some definite bigger names on this one. I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty excited with it. Um, and then, uh, I think afterward, given scheduling, I'm doing an EP with my buddy Swam. So that'll be done. I'm not sure when it's going to release, but it's definitely happening. So there's that. And then, yeah, everything else is kind of up in the air. Just we'll see where, see where time goes. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having me.